Uh, my name is Jim Amer, and I teach seventh grade math here at Rockway School. Our seventh grade standards are awesome uh, regarding the algebra standards. We're going to be asking the kids to solve tons of problems where they are going to have to add, subtract, multiply, and divide with fractions and with other rational numbers. We will learn uh, topics involving number sense, uh, a lot with proportional reasoning and how you would see them in tables and in graphs in equations and in stories. Times two. I'm writing down exactly what Reagan said and I want to know if you guys oh, think it's... There's so many things I could give you in real life where we do this. Amusement parks and do I want to buy the gold pass at Kings Island or do I not? These are all linear situations that we can set side by side and we can do calculations to figure out how many times do I need to do this thing before we're equivalent. Is it more than 100 hours? I wonder if that's more than 100 hours, 14.3 repeated. All right, Charlie, you had a different way to do yeah. it? And eventually we'll get to the point where we write equations for these linear patterns that we've seen, and then we'll learn how to manipulate simple equations. Seventh grade is a big year for us really trying to solidify uh, what a linear pattern is, and then how could we solve some simple linear, linear equations. Do you think that that relationship between the hours we work and the money that we're gonna make, do you think that that is a proportional relationship? I didn't know what strategies the kids would use, but when I walked around the room, it's really interesting. I saw kids who were guessing and testing over and over and over again and not getting there. Eventually they did. I saw other kids doing a little more formal things, uh, making tables and making graphs, and it was so exciting to me today. I saw one young lady. I thought this was gonna be a linear pattern. Why? Because um, it goes up the same amount who actually wrote the general equation that we have done so far for linear patterns, the slope-intercept form. So I was thinking about the general equation that we learned about, um, the y equals mx plus b. She wrote the general equation for a linear pattern, and then she went and utilized it to help her solve that problem. 36, 36 and then you have to do 36, 36 divided by 2, two which is 18. 18. There's so many wonderful ways that a child can make sense of it versus just trying to just uh, give a, a child a rule. A lot of groups struggling with how much more of an hour do we need to work to get exactly $64. I love that you guys are trying to figure that out. We are all trying to value process. We want to know how every child is trying to attack problems or solve problems. And then we have to make educational decisions on how we can bring this out so that everybody's coming to a common answer. But it's important for us to have open questions that allow kids to attack these problems the way that makes sense to them. And then we need to start sharing out the more efficient and more efficient and the more efficient ways that we can find. Five plus six is 11. That's it. It's 11. But what we do want to do is look at how did the kids go about trying to solve that problem correctly? And how did some kids go about it in an incorrect way? And let's try to share that out loud so we can all learn from that. And so we would make less mistakes in the future. $4.50 times some number equals 64.50, which you guys were all doing. A lot of our focus now is trying to prepare kids for the real world. And in the real world, we face, we face dilemmas or problems that are either in word form from people or we're reading something. I love it. Some people already started reading the, the problem. We want kids to practice the reading. We want kids to develop strategies that they can use to help them figure out these issues. And if, if the reading is an issue, then we all have to come up with solutions together of what we can do to help the kid get bought into the mathematics that's in that problem, which we can do. One way that I do it in the classroom is a lot of times I try to act out what the problem really is encasing. Awesome. So how many hours do we have to babysit? If we let kids talk in groups about a situation, the actual problems they're trying to do, if we let kids communicate together, they'll probably help each other too on the reading issues. So these are things that we just have to work on together. I hear and I read about parents um, um, discussing and having concerns about the fact that mathematics is not being taught the way it was when they were in school. And it, it's something that's really interesting because a lot of times it is being taught the way the parents did it in school, but the parents aren't in the classroom to see how it's being taught. Order of operation says if, if you're down to multiplication and addition, you do multiplication before addition. But what we as what we what I found is that if we can just communicate more openly between the parent and the teacher, we can try to close that gap. And if we are teaching it different, there's a reason. Math can be fun if we if we work hard to give kids good tasks. And if we work hard as an educator, as, a, as the adults in the room or at home, if we find ways to support our kid and to say, it's okay to make mistakes, 
It's okay to be wrong because we're gonna, if we are and we figure out what we did wrong, our brains are gonna grow and we're gonna learn. Okay, thank you guys. We're done. That was awesome.